Hi all, welcome to Asianet News Samvad. This is a unique talk show which will be aired on all channels and digital platforms of Asianet News Network and we are extremely honored and privileged to have Mr. Abhinav Bindra with us on our opening day. A legend who needs no introduction, India's first individual Olympics champion. Thank you, thank you for having me. So Abhinav, uh, we'll quickly get down to business here. Uh, as um, it, it happened a few days ago, uh, the OVEP was formally introduced into the Indian sports educational system. So I'll start with the occasion itself. Can you, if you can give us a brief description of what is, what is it all about and how will it impact the sporting culture in the country? Well, I think, you know, sport, the power of sport goes beyond uh, winning and losing on the field of play. The power of sport really is at the values society in la at large can imbibe through sport. You know, sport teaches you a little bit about winning, but sport teaches you how to lose. Sport teaches you integrity, sport teaches you honesty, sport teaches you how to set goals and, and follow those goals. Sport teaches you teamwork, it um, builds relationships. Uh, it teaches you a lot about listening, about listening to different points of view. Um, but all in all, what sport can do to our very young society, the potential is absolutely immense. Not all of our citizens will go and compete at the Olympic Games, but I think each citizen in this country can do well and benefit a great deal from living the philosophy of Olympism. And that exactly is what the OVEP is uh, directed towards. It is an experiential learning program for for the youth you know as a nation we're all after economic success and it's very interesting to note that all the greatest economies of the world also happen to be great uh, sporting superpowers and i do believe that they have become great economic powers because sport has played a very important role uh, in the foundation of that society uh, and that is how uh, in, a, in, a, in a humble way we've started uh, with Odisha. Uh, where uh, we're doing a pilot uh, to start off with in the first year for about 100 schools. Uh, and then based on the results and the impact the pilot creates, the vision at least is to uh, imbibe it into the state education board, which in turn would then impact 7 million kids of that state. But we also have to ensure we do not build a toxic culture for sport. Uh, when I talk about building a toxic culture for sport, it can very easily happen that we do that when we get totally one-dimensional and focused on, on winning. Um, and, you know, in sport, winning is very important, but winning is not the only thing. Uh, and that is where we must add a lot of values to what sport can do to society on a whole. At an Olympic Games, you have 10,000 athletes who compete. Only 300 of those athletes go back home with gold medals. What are the rest? They're not losers, right? They gain a lot from sport. And in, in terms, when we actively try and build a culture for sport, we have to ensure that we attach enough values um, to the softer elements that sport can do and how sport can really shape our society. Abhinav, I found the toxic culture point very interesting. As parents, fans, administrators, I think we need to have a more sensitive and finer understanding of sport and values yeah i think it's not just about parents it's it's about the whole ecosystem that surrounds an athlete whether it be society on how they react or overreact when an athlete wins or loses whether it is the media if they go hysterical when we win or when it's overly hysterical when we lose uh, it is about understanding sport to a greater degree uh, and understanding uh, how sport is yeah, winning on the field of play is important, uh, but it is something you know can never be guaranteed. Uh, and uh, when I talk about that toxic culture, um, you know we attach too much to winning. We make winning too big, uh, and that is a problem because it's not sustainable. So the focus should be on the fact that we want more young people to be involved in sport. We want greater depth of talent emerging out of various disciplines. Say, say, take shooting, for example. We didn't win any medals in, 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 in the last Olympics or even the Olympics prior. But the depth of talent that exists in that sport is immense in this country, which also is a good indicator that that sport, even though has not won 
uh, medals at the Olympics has developed over the last decade to a great, great degree because if you see the numbers, the quality coming up, coming through. Um, now you have a completely fresh team from what almost a fresh team from what competed at Tokyo, and you have new stars emerging. So that all that argues well. So this program will definitely also help increase uh, participation in, in, in sport. You know, elite sport is always a niche world world over. It's not you're not suddenly going to get millions and millions of people dedicating 20 years of their life to elite sport. It's not going to happen. But we need those numbers. We need to push those numbers uh, higher. But we, and those numbers will only go higher when there will be more participation into recreational sport. You know, then oh, an offshoot of more numbers in recreational sport would mean more um, athletes or more people devoting a long time to pursue excellence in sport. That's what we want to see. So, Abhinav, uh, speaking about uh, OBB, it started with Odisha right now. What are the next steps you are targeting and how long do you think before uh, it, it spreads pan-India? Well, it's not it's not completely dependent on me. Um, you know, it's a humble start. Uh, we're just about starting. July will be the, the semester where it will start. Uh, you know, impact of such a program will not be seen in, in, in just a few months. It takes a little while. But there has always, already been interest received from other states contacting to to see what you know what they can do um and that's what you know it's a conversation which is which pretty much is in the hands of different states and uh, uh, the international olympic committee you know the abhina Bitra foundation is just kind of facilitating it and, and, and trying to ensure uh, that the program in india is run at the highest level um and uh, so, you know, it, it really depends also on, on the proactiveness and nimbleness uh, in decision making in various governments. And that differs from state to state, right? I mean, you have some which are very nimble and want to get things done, done very quickly. Others uh, are, are a little bit slower in pace. So it really, it really depends on, 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 on the proactiveness in, 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 in governments, uh, how they you know, envision it in their state uh, and then how the IOC also decides to participate in, 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 in partnering with them. So, Avinav, uh, speaking of sports education as a whole, it is yet to be entirely implemented in the Indian schools and it's yet, uh, it's still a debatable topic. So, what's your personal take on how long do you think uh, it could take for that goal to be achieved? How do you define sport education? Uh, focusing on uh, in, in the different kinds of sports, uh, make it mandatory uh, that you have a particular, uh, you have a sports education class and uh, can, uh, children can take part in the sports of their choice so that they are accustomed to the entire sporting culture and not entirely yeah. deprived of it. Yeah, so I think what you're trying to define is not a certain, a certain deal. It's not real. I mean, it's not education. I think it's 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 about making sure that sport is part and parcel of the holistic development of a child, right? But that is what we really want to see. Uh, you know, sporting careers are short. They are 10, 20 years. You know, but we have to ensure that we also make very, you know, very good citizens of these young kids. And there, I think, uh, the, the experience that they learn from sport will, will certainly will, will help that cause. Uh, and um, that's what uh, I'd like to see happen. Abhinav, there was a time when the average Indian athlete was very defensive and written off even before boarding a flight to the Olympic venue. Now we see more fearless, confident athletes and recently we had our best Olympic Games till date. But our young shooters, despite winning gold in World Championships, World Cups, couldn't perform under pressure. What's your advice to them? What's that single most important ingredient for winning an Olympic medal? Well, pressure is a funny thing. You know, nobody can really perform to, top, to one's optimum under pressure. You know, if I put you under pressure, I'm sure you'll struggle as well. Uh, it's just how human beings are wired. Uh, but I think, you know, I think the shooting, as I said, has, you know, let's, 
we didn't win at the Olympics but in, 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 in Tokyo but you have to go beyond that and you have to look at it more holistically and, and, and see how the sport has developed over the last decade and for sure the sport has developed I think what it can further do and further refine is preparation towards an Olympics I think they erred and made some mistakes in their preparation and I think that is what um, the, that experience in Tokyo should teach the system at large and the young athletes that the Olympics is not just another competition it's a very special competition and the athletes will be under pressure you cannot escape that pressure you have to learn to work with that pressure uh, and and that is uh, that is i think the learning you know the preparation has to become very precise there are several elements uh, that have to come together there's of course a skill element which has to be refined there is a physical element which has to be refined there is there is a very important recovery element which has to be refined there has to be a tactical there have to be tactics in preparation as well that you ensure that you know when you are at actually at an olympics you have your batteries 100% uh, and you're you are uh, training that you're at the best at your best form during those during the period of uh, those two weeks uh, and that is where a scientific approach to training is important um, you know trying to really focus on that last 1% uh, to, to get an edge over others when you go to an olympics you know it's a small competition you know a world championship would attract a higher number of participants but the olympics will attract a, a short of a smaller group but the absolute creme de la creme um, who participate at the olympics and each one of them or majority of them are capable of winning on a particular day uh, so you have to try and get a little bit of an edge in there science technology engineering analytics and medicine steam as i call it plays a very important role in in, in, in the overall development of the athlete so abhinav uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge that indian shooting is facing right now well frankly i don't know because i don't follow it so closely i'm not associated with the inner workings of the preparation of the team i know my i am as informed as you are uh, you know there was a big talk about you know a change in the coaching part after tokyo and i saw recently after a year year after the games that process has finally happened um so it is a matter of defining the right policies as well the right selection criteria as well because you know you are you're spoiled for choices a little bit uh, it's also a little bit of a headache uh, because then you need to make sure that you have the right selection criteria and the right selection policy uh, to to really make sure that um, you know you select the right athletes make sure that the athletes keep developing i think that is the challenge we have a young team and of course young athletes need time uh, you know a 17 year old is not going to be may have may show potential to be the best in the world and maybe win few world level competitions but the process is development it's at a very early stage right uh, if a 17 year old is your main athlete he or she has only been competing for two or three four years and in two or three four years he or she has not fully developed uh, he or she is in the process of developing so that while that has to be ensured that they also develop uh, it's not key you go you, you just hop around the world and compete from one competition to the other Uh, you also have to ensure that your team continuously develops in the various elements that i talked about so uh, i mean now uh, as you said you don't follow uh, deeply the, the sport anymore but uh, i'd still like to know from you india's chances in the world championships it's a young team they have the potential to do well there's no question about that uh, uh, you know they will i think the world championships also starts the olympic qualification phase the quota situation for for paris and i think that will be an additional uh, thing on the mind of athletes to get that quota place that is the priority really um, should be the priority for the athletes um, the chances are bright how much they will win and what they will do i have no clue but uh, i'm sure that uh, they are working in, in the right direction and uh, you know the potential that they've shown over the last 
last uh, few years has been very very positive so i can only th- i only hope good things happen ab now despite all these recent achievements there is an alarming increase in the number of doping cases in our country recently we heard olympian anju bobi george alleging that many indian athletes are bringing back performance enhancing drugs from abroad yeah again it boils down to creating the right environment for sport sport to develop in this country you know i talked so much about creating a toxic environment and you know i think we've made winning too big and when you make winning too big then you know athletes are you know uh, they give it they give whatever it would ask them and they they get very susceptible to even doing things which are banned which are illegal so creating the right environment i think is very very important you know making sure that athletes also develop the right values uh, sport and that can only happen uh, through proper awareness through proper education you said we won we won we won seven medals at the olympics uh, but i think on the shame list uh, we're third or fourth in the world uh, which certainly uh, it's not a good thing and it's not a good sign and that again talks a little bit for me personally uh, talks a little bit about the environment in our country that exists as we are aware organizers of 2026 commonwealth games have dropped shooting archery and wrestling from the list of sporting disciplines and indian olympic association has lodged a protest against it what's your take on this obviously i'd like to see my sport represented in the commonwealth games uh, we've historically done well and it's been part of the commonwealth games but it is about you know making sure that your your sport fits into uh, into the realm of things there has a lot of lobbying done uh, by the world body by the different bodies that that rule sport it is not just so easy that you send draft a letter or an email and shoot it off and tomorrow it will be um, included or make a ridiculous suggestion that the games will be held in another continent and post it them in india uh, it's never going to be sustainable you know that that idea which was put forward a couple of years ago i knew from day one it was a it was just showmanship uh and not the rubbish um you have to ensure that your sport continues to remain relevant but even if you look at the olympic program you have so many young youthful urban sports making it to the olympic games uh, so you have to ensure that the sport remains relevant the sport remains sustainable in terms of cost in terms of environmental sustainability and if you ensure that uh, then the sport is strong enough to you know uh there would be no question to ask uh, so i think a lot of work needs to be done in that direction but just shooting off an email here or there or uh, making some suggestions that you know we'll boycott the games and this that the other won't help uh, you have to ensure that you know you lobby in the right forums uh, you speak to the right people uh, you ensure that the sports does the sport in itself uh, stand strong Uh, and work needs to be done in that direction up you know you were among the very few to openly talk about the mental health aspect of an athlete uh, recently simon biles naomi osaka and a handful of others have opened up about what they were experiencing but do you think but do you think that there is still a long way to go in raising awareness and increasing acceptance well i think uh, you know an athlete's life has been dehumanized to a great degree over the last few years i think there has been a big misconception that athletes are super human uh, and they are kind of immune to any kind of mental health issues but on the other hand an athlete's life um, you know is full of insecurities um, perhaps has more red flags and triggers than you know, normal careers have uh, you know there is uh, the constant of dealing with pressure there is a constant about winning there is a constant about dealing with uh, failure there is um, the physiological load just training puts on your body if you do not recover enough or recover physically enough it can also play have a detrimental role on your on your mental aspect uh, you know there are injuries that an athlete faces while there are physical injuries the mental toll an injury uh, has on a career of an athlete is absolutely immense um you know there's an impending end of a career there is a career transition out of sport which is a very difficult transition most athletes have 
Um, so there are many elements and red flags in a career and a journey of an athlete. Um, but the bottom line is that, you know, we have to, again, ensure that the environment is not toxic. Uh, and unfortunately, many environments across the world have become toxic because they've made winning too big uh, and winning the only thing and pushing the athletes uh, more and really dehumanizing the athlete. Until and unless you put human well-being at the heart and center of performance, will never attain sustainable success. Uh, and only when you start to really prioritize the human element of the athlete, the human well-being of the athlete, that is when you will start to prevent um, mental health issues. Otherwise, um, athletes will continue to remain very susceptible to, to different issues. Even though you are not an active athlete now, you are still part of the Olympic movement as a member of IOC commission. And it must have been a great matter of pride that you are able to contribute even after your retirement. Yeah, so I've been a part of the commission for a few years and um, you know, tried to contribute to my uh, to the great extent that I can uh, for, for the well-being of athletes, for, to ensure that the athlete remain with the heart and center of uh, the Olympic movement. A lot of my efforts uh, for the com athletes commission have been directed towards mental health, all the resources that the IOC has put out uh, through the working group of on mental health. Uh, I've had a direct involvement there. Um, but also on, on, on several other projects, on, on several different areas, I've tried to contribute uh, my best towards that. And in a way, it's been a fulfilling experience uh, and ability to give back to sport at large uh, and give back to the sporting community at large. It has, at a personal level, also been a very fulfilling uh, I remember immediately after Neeraj Chopra's achievement in Tokyo Olympics, you shared your excitement with us and now Neeraj is all set for his next big assignment, the World Championship. What's your message to him, especially considering the fact that there will be great scrutiny and expectations this time? I'd like to wish him the best. Uh, you know, I've had a chance to interact with him a few times and I think he's a focused young person and I think, uh, uh, you know, I only try to tell him that, you know, Change will always be constant, you know, where, how he prepared for uh, Tokyo was one way of preparation. Now things have changed in many ways. Uh, so constant adaptability uh, in preparation is something which is very important. Um, you talk to yourself about expectations. He'll have to deal with that. They'll be about dealing with uh, external expectations, but also internal expectations. Uh, but I think he's a committed person and I think uh, if he puts in all the effort, which I'm sure he will, he will continue continue to improve, continue to uh, develop as an athlete. Again, he's a young, uh, a young man and, and he's yet to achieve his fullest potential. I hope he continues to improve. Uh, you know, we, we, we would like to see him cross that 90 meter mark soon uh, and, and, and continuously uh, you know, be one of the strongest contenders at the world stage. And I wish him all the luck uh, that he can get. Okay, uh, Avinav. So, this was the first part of the interview, which was a serious part. Now, uh, we will move on to the fun part, basically. I don't really care much for expectations, but let's try. <laughs> all right, sir. So, the first thing is the most embarrassing moment for you to date. So... Oh. You know, I I have had many embarrassing moments in my life, uh, and even in my sports career, I think uh, I had many embarrassing moments in my life. But <laughs> hard to remember any. But what I learned in my sports career was to always uh, learn to laugh at myself. Uh, so, and that is what happened. That is what something that my coaches taught me was the ability to be able to uh, to laugh at yourself. I think one of the embarrassing moments was that. Once I went to uh, reach the final of an uh, important competition and I forgot to take uh, my ammunition. So I went on to the firing line without any bullets. And then I just had to ask my neighbor for some. Okay. Uh, the worst joke that you have ever cracked? I have only good jokes. My jokes are not poor. So even if it's a good joke, would you like to do? 
uh, share it with us how do you expect me to just like i'm i'm not a comedian i cannot put get you a joke now or like in that instant it's really hard for me sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay sir uh, your first and your favorite crush sport Come on, <laughs> you gotta come up with something better. You know? Hey, it's a great thing. I love sport. Why do you think I was involved in sport for twenty-two years? I certainly loved it. Otherwise, I would be mad. Yeah, expecting a, uh, some actress or anyone. Told you don't have expectations. Abhi, now what is the most craziest thing you tried before Beijing? No, I went on a commando training course uh, three days prior to boarding my flight, and it was a crazy thing to do because you know. Uh, the 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 chances of getting an injury was more than seventy percent, um, and I did it because I took that risk and it was a risk worth taking because it ended up being a very important aspect of my preparation. We all are looking forward to the biopic on Abhinav Bindra. Will there be songs and dances in it? I'm not producing the film. I've only sold the rights of my book to Mr. Kapoor. So. Um, One of the reasons why it's not been made so far is that I'd never sign off on such nonsense. The impression about Bindra is that of a serious, reserved guy who takes part in a lonely sport. That's why I asked about songs and dances. No, I said that. Yeah, so I don't think there will be songs and dances. It'll be a. It will certainly be a, a loosely adapted version of my autobiography, but uh, I certainly hope that there will be no songs. What was the best advice you got between Athens and Beijing? Uh, the most interesting advice, uh, yeah, to learn how to detach from outcomes. Uh, I think was something which was an advice given, but also an advice imbibed through learning. Uh, so that you know, when I went to Athens, I was very attached to winning, and really, you know, winning for me was very important. The outcome was very important. And when I went to Beijing, I was very detached from the outcome, and uh, uh, I was more really attached to the process of what I had to do. So that was a very important learning and advice that I received. So Abhinav, if not a shooter, what would you have liked to become? Was it in sports or uh, something from the academic perspective? A lawyer. And finally, Abhinav, uh, is there any confession would you like to have which you haven't made? Anywhere to date? Certainly not going to make it on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Abhinav sir, thank you so much for your precious time. Uh, you talking thank to you. us it means thank a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinav. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Good to thank see you. Bye bye. <laughs>